Hello, everyone. It's great to be with you today. Thanks for taking the time for this important discussion. And uh, I want to start by thanking those who were involved in making this virtual event possible today. We are so grateful to work with many partner organizations, especially many hospices around the country. And, uh, and without the help of those organizations and the people who are involved in that work, uh, we wouldn't be able to reach all of you in this helpful way. Uh, so thank you to those who organized this event today. What we're going to talk about is how you can use this document called Five Wishes, which is provided to you either in booklet format as a hard copy or in digital format, how you can use Five Wishes to bring some peace of mind to yourself and to the people who are most important to you, your family or your close friends. So if you're watching this presentation and you're an adult, if you're 18 or over, then this message is for you. If you are a young adult, if you are a middle-aged adult, an older adult, it doesn't matter. If you're healthy or if you have a serious illness, this information is helpful for you as well. Especially right now, I think, as all of us have walked down this road together, uh, the coronavirus and COVID-19, we've seen just how quickly a health crisis can come up upon us and how important it is for each of us to have at least some idea of how we'd go about making decisions for someone who we love if they become very sick, whether it's through uh, a, a serious illness that was recently diagnosed, a car accident, uh, or just something unexpected. So what we're gonna talk about today as we dig into five wishes and how you can use it with your family and your close friends are the practical things that you can do today, this week, right now, to make sure that you have some peace of mind so that if something happens to you or somebody you love, you won't have to guess about what to do. You'll have a practical plan and it will meet the legal requirements. So as you think about taking these next steps and we're going to walk through each of the, the five wishes step-by-step step with some tips and some instructions on how to fill it out, I also encourage you to think about who in your life this message could be most helpful for in addition to yourself. So if you're hearing this and you're thinking about maybe your adult children or your own parents or your grandparents, this is something that you can share with them as well. So rather than this being something that you do all on your own, you can bring them into the discussion and actually have them fill out their own five wishes at the same time that you do or right after. So with that, let's jump into it. I'm going to uh, attempt to share my screen with you so that you can see what I'm seeing and what I'm walking through. And we'll go through this in just about 20 minutes or so. We'll keep it fairly short. And then uh, it's important for you to know that we at Five Wishes are always available to answer your questions, as well as your local hospice and palliative care provider. You can turn to any of us if you have questions on filling out Five Wishes, what it means, or, uh, or especially if someone in your family is seriously ill and you're wondering about what options are available for your health care, uh, certainly contact your local hospice and palliative care provider. By way of a little bit of background, uh, Aging with Dignity is a private nonprofit organization. We were founded in 1996, a little over 20 years ago. And our organization was inspired by the work of Mother Teresa of Calcutta. Our founder, Jim Tui was legal counsel to Mother Teresa for 12 years. And even more importantly, he lived and worked in some of her homes for the dying in Washington, DC and in Calcutta and in Mexico. And I say that because that's important to know that uh, that was kind of the, the inspiration, not only for aging with dignity, but especially for five wishes, as we thought about when someone is very sick, if they're not able to communicate for themselves, What's most important to them? And most often, these, these things that stand out that matter to us the most are the issues of the heart and soul. So often about wanting to have our loved ones with us, wanting to know that we're not alone, that we're accompanied, maybe somebody to hold our hand. That was what we saw and Jim saw, especially in some of the work in the missions that, he's, that he worked in with Mother Teresa. And 
you know, actually that's something that we see in homes and hospitals and long-term care facilities as we, over the past 20 years, have walked with people and families as they've cared for their loved ones. And this is important. It's an important point to share with you from our experience at Aging with Dignity and Five Wishes. One of the things that I've seen in my 20 years at Aging with Dignity is that the bond and the desire that we all have to take good care of the people we love, to really do right by our loved ones, that's a common bond that we all share. It doesn't matter geography, where we're located, uh, you know, what our, what our faith traditions or cultural traditions might be, or even who we vote for. Uh, that's a common bond that unites us, the desire to do the right thing for our loved ones, to make the right decisions for them, and to really care well for them and to love them well if they're very sick. And here's the challenge that we've seen. A lot of times when families are put in a situation where they are, are able to care for someone they love, they just don't know what to do. They don't know where to start. And that's where Five Wishes comes in as the solution. Because as you'll see, what Five Wishes turns into is really an instruction book for what good care means for you and for the people who are around you, the people who might be caring for you or the people for whom you may be caring someday. When we introduced Five Wishes, we really didn't have an idea of what would become of it. Uh, it's grown now to become the most widely used advanced directive in America. It's used by more than 35 million people, and, uh, and it's available now in 29 and actually 30 languages since we just added a new edition this month. Here's something else that we've learned, and we've seen the same thing in our work with Five Wishes as all of the national research has documented over the past 10 or 20 years. When people are asked the question, what would be most important to you if you were seriously ill and near the end of your life? These are the things that most people say. It might resonate with you. It might be some of your answers. People say, I want to be at home, if that's possible. I don't want to be in pain. I want to be in the company of my loved ones. I want the people who I know and I love to be present, to be near. And even if I can't speak for myself, I still want to have some control over the care that I receive and especially the decisions that are made on my behalf. Those are the things that often stand out at the top of people's minds when they, when they stop to consider what would be most important to me. And here's the unfortunate reality. The unfortunate reality is that what so often happens is almost the exact opposite of what people say they want. Oftentimes people are cared for in the last days of their life in a place other than their home, even if it might have been possible for them to stay in their house with a little bit of planning and with some discussion. We also know that sometimes the end of life can be unnecessarily painful or isolating. And this is especially a challenge today in, uh, in the times of COVID-19 and visitor restrictions and healthcare facilities. Uh, we're seeing that, of course, not just with families who have a loved one who's been diagnosed with COVID, but anyone who has a loved one who's seriously ill, who's in a hospital or a nursing home, are having to navigate through uh, the restrictions for visitors. So uh, we're, we're looking at ways to be creative. There are technology options like, uh, like FaceTime, virtual events like this. Uh, I know just recently my own mom was in the hospital for uh, for something that wasn't related to COVID, but my dad and my brothers and I were trying to figure out how we stay in touch with her. She happened to have her iPad in her room and uh, it was imperfect. It, it didn't take the place of us being in the room with her while she was in the hospital, but it did help. And it let her know that uh, my dad, my brothers and I, my kids or grandkids were remembering her, were thinking about her, wanted to stay engaged with her, even when she was in the hospital, so that it wasn't as much of an isolating experience as it could have been. And we also know that very few of us, when I think about our whole population as a nation, only about 20 to 30% of us have completed any type of an advanced directive. 
And when I say advanced directives, I'm thinking about living wills, durable powers of attorney for healthcare. Some of these terms we'll, we'll dig a little bit more into, and you might have already heard, and you, might, you may have already completed something, some type of an advanced directive. Maybe if you did an estate plan with an attorney, might have been recently, or it might have been long ago. Uh, if that's your situation, you can still use five wishes. And in fact, if, it, if you filled out an advanced directive many years ago, you should update your document. They don't expire. There's not an expiration date on any advanced directive, so it doesn't um, fall out of validity. But if there's a document that you filled out five years ago or 10 years ago, or your parents have filled out a long time ago, go back at, and look at it and make sure that it reflects your preferences today, that it matches what you would want today. And also, if it's been that long, it might be a good idea to update your document just so that you have a document that's been signed more recently rather than a decade or more ago. <clears throat> Knowing what people said was important to them and seeing the difference between what everyone said was important and what they were getting, we saw that there was a need to create a new solution because the advanced directives that had been available for a few decades, the typical state forms, they weren't working. One of the reasons that they weren't working is that people weren't using them because they were hard to understand. I, I've seen some of these state forms and I look at them and, uh, and it's, it's hard even after many years of experience in talking about advanced directives, it's even hard for me to understand some of them. So it's almost impossible to imagine sitting down as a family and talking about a document that you can't understand. And that's why we created Five Wishes with these goals to have a simple format, to put it in regular everyday language so you don't have to have a medical degree or a legal degree to understand it. We wanted something that would really promote peace of mind and help us have peace of mind for ourselves and for the people who are closest to us. And that's really one of the gifts and the benefits that Five Wishes brings that's immediate. You know, hopefully if you fill out Five Wishes and use it with your family or your close friends today or this week, Hopefully you won't have to use it for a long time into the future. But even if you don't touch it again and look back at it or need to access it for many years, it brings you that peace of mind immediately today because once you've talked about it and you've put your wishes down in writing in a legally valid document, you know that some of those decisions that would have had to have been made without any instruction from you, that it will be guided not by what somebody guesses, or imagines you would want, but by what you have decided and what you've indicated that you would want. And that's what really helps to avoid the, uh, the second guessing and the guilt that we've heard from, you know, honestly, too many families who have contacted us after a loved one has passed and, uh, and they had not filled out any sort of advanced directive. And especially we've seen this come up with siblings who want the best for their mom or dad, but they disagree on what mom or dad would have wanted. And we've seen too many situations where siblings stop speaking to one another after the death of a parent because they disagreed and they fought about what should be done and what, would, what should be decided. Filling this out avoids that kind of second guessing and disagreement among family members who, based on all of my experience, almost always want the best thing and the right thing for their loved one, but they just disagree on what the best thing is. And ultimately, it really helps you and those who are close to you to get the care, the health care, the treatment, and the care that you want and deserve. I mentioned that what sets Five Wishes apart is that it, in addition to the medical and the legal questions, which are very important, Five Wishes also touches on personal, emotional, and spiritual needs and comfort. We were grateful to work with the American Bar Association's Commission on Law and Aging. They helped us to review the state statutes in all 50 states so that we could draft and write five wishes in a way that meets the legal requirements in as many states as possible. And today, five wishes meets the legal requirements fully in 44 states. Those states are listed on, uh, in, on the front cover of your five wishes. When you look at that section, you'll see that, uh, that five wishes meets the requirements in the 44 states, 
and that there are six states that remain that still require residents to, uh, to put their wishes, to put your own wishes in a state specific or a state required form. So if you have any questions on that or for an up-to-date list, you can also see more information at fivewishes.org in addition to your front cover of Five Wishes. One of the most important things with Five Wishes, in addition to being a legally valid document that guides you through your own decision making, is that it really gives you a great template to be able to have a conversation with your family or your close friends or anyone who would be involved in your care. You know, I mentioned that one of the challenges with the, some of the typical advanced directives is that they were written in language that's hard to understand. And, and so, as you can imagine, most families would have a hard time sitting down around a, a, a dining room table or a coffee table or in a living room and, and have a conversation using a form that was difficult to navigate or understand. So, uh, so that was one of the motivations that we had when we first created Five Wishes was to really give you something that would be a tool that you could use, not just for the documentation, but for that conversation that accompanies it. Now, as we dig in next, in the next few minutes, into the actual wishes and some of the questions that you'll be considering, this slide here shows a bit of a map of where we're going to go. We'll start by thinking about who you would trust to make decisions for you and which one who you would name as your healthcare agent. Then in wish two, give some specific thought to your preferences for life support treatment, when you'd want it or not want it. And then wishes three, four, and five get into more of your own personal care preferences for your physical comfort and how you want to be treated and what you want your loved ones and your healthcare providers to know. Those are kind of the five benchmarks, the five wishes that we'll talk about in these next few sections. Wish one is typically known or regarded as the durable power of attorney for healthcare or naming a healthcare agent. And one of the things that I love about Five Wishes, I, I think this is a very clear example, is that the headline under Wish One is not durable power of attorney for healthcare. It's plainly the person who I trust to make decisions for me if I can't make them for myself. That's what you're naming here. It allows you to name a person who would be your voice if you're not able to speak for yourself, who would make the same healthcare decisions for you that you would have made if you were able. A few tips on, uh, on, on filling out this section of five wishes. On the left side of the page, you're given the chance to pick three people, to designate three people in priority order to serve as your healthcare agent. So you name a first choice, a second choice, and a third choice. Now, here's something that we're commonly asked, uh, and this is especially true for parents thinking about naming their adult children as healthcare agents, and they wonder, how do I prioritize who is a first choice, a second choice, and a third choice? And this is important uh, because rather than naming a group to serve collectively as your healthcare agent, two people or three people working together, it is important to designate both for your family and for your healthcare providers that priority order. Because as you can imagine, if there is a health crisis, if you're in a hospital uh, or had been in an accident, your healthcare providers will want to know who the one person is that they should start with to call. And that's your first choice as your healthcare agent. If that person is not available or willing or able to make decisions for you, then they would go on to the second or the third alternate. Then on the right side of the page on wish one, there are bullet points that are all written in the positive. They say, if, if, if I've named my healthcare agent and I'm not able to make my own decisions, then these are the powers that that healthcare agent can have. Everything from making my medical treatment decisions uh, to making decisions on who is providing my care and where I'm receiving my care. If there's anything that you see that you don't want there, all you have to do is cross it out. Then there are blank lines at the bottom of that wish under wish one or number one, where you can give additional instructions to your healthcare agent. And this is where it's a good idea if you, 
if you want your three people that you've named as alter as, as second or third alternates to try to talk together and come to consensus on what the decision should be, that's a place where you can add it at the end of wish one. Also encourage you if, uh, as you think about who your healthcare agent should be, it may be your closest relative. It may be your, sprout, your spouse, it may be an adult child, but it might not be. It might be a close friend. Really give thought to who the person is in your life who you would trust to make decisions for you and to really know and understand what you would have decided for yourself. Wish number two is commonly known as the living will. This is where we get into questions about life support treatment, when you'd want it or not want it. On the left side of the page, there is a section that says what life support treatment means to me. And there is a common definition that was given to us by the medical and the legal experts about uh, what, what life support treatment could be as people approach the end of life. If there's anything that you see there that you don't want to be considered life support treatment, the blank lines are there and you can write anything that you like to limit the meaning of life support treatment, to give additional information, additional instruction. That's the space where you can do that. And that's also the space where if there are any other guidance, any, any other places of guidance or people that you'd like to point to, could be a priest or a rabbi or a minister, somebody else who you, you might want to point to to, uh, to help your healthcare agent or your healthcare provider understand your values and, uh, and how you would want decisions to be made regarding life support treatment. That's the place for you to note it. Then on the opposite side, there are three different scenarios that, are peop that people are likely to be in as they approach the end of life. And you can choose either, yes, I want life support treatment, no, I don't want life support treatment, or a third middle ground option of I want it, I want life support treatment if it could help my condition or symptoms, but if it's not help helping, then I want it stopped. So look at all those scenarios, look at the three choices, and pick the option that seems best to you, that seems most aligned with what you would decide for yourself, most aligned with what instructions you would want to provide to both your healthcare agent and your healthcare provider. Wish number three really gets into what it means to be comfortable, physically especially. It talks about pain management, what your wishes are regarding pain medicine and uh, and, and this oftentimes results in some interesting family conversations. <clears throat> Speaking of conversations, I'll join you in having a cup of coffee. Uh, we, uh, one of the things that I love to do really is, uh, is sit down with someone as they're filling out five wishes. And I remember one time specifically sitting down with a couple and they had been married for a long time, 50 years or so. And, uh, and at first they thought, well, we don't need to do this because if we have to, get, if we have to make a decision for one another, we'll know what to do. Uh, we don't need a document to tell us. So I said, well, let's just sit down and, and talk about it together. And they got to wish three. And, uh, and the husband said, well, you know, the most important thing for me is to be awake and aware and present with the family as long as I can be. And I'm willing to be in a little bit of pain if that means that I have more time to be present with everyone around me. And his wife looked at him and she said, are you crazy? If it hasn't been said, it's not going to get said. Give me whatever you got to give me. I don't want to be in pain. And they looked at each other and, uh, and they said, okay, if that's what you want, uh, that's what we'll do. That's what we'll do. And I think they realized and I realized by watching that interaction that if they were called on to make a decision for each other, they would have done the best that they could. And I think that's what families do every day. They do the best that they can. But they would have probably guessed wrong. And they would have probably guessed and made a guess based on what they would have wanted for themselves rather than what the other person, even in this case a spouse, wanted for themselves. So a lot of that can be um, alleviated by just having this simple conversation and filling out 
the document. It also gives you a chance, one of the options in WISH 3 uh, mentions that you'd like to know about hospice options and you'd like your doctor to talk to you about hospice options. And you know, over the past 20 years, I, I've heard countless stories from families who have cared for loved ones who approach the end of life. And almost always, one of the comments that I hear from people who talk about their experience with hospice is number one, they're grateful for it. They were grateful for the care that was provided, not just for the patient, but for the whole family and all the caregivers. And they most often say, I wish that we knew that hospice was there sooner, or I wish we would have asked for it sooner. And I think that's one of the benefits of including the mention of hospice in wish number three, is that as you're talking with your family right now, this week, today, whenever you're filling out five wishes, and as you're talking with your doctor, you can be the one to say, hey, I, I'm familiar with hospice, I, I like it, and I wanna know about the options and when it's appropriate. Just so that that opens the door to a conversation where your healthcare providers can fill you in. You still get to decide, your family still gets to decide when it's the right time, um, but better to have all the information in front of you rather than, uh, than not talking about it until it's too late or until it's a time that, uh, that you've missed many of the benefits that could have been provided to you and to the, the surrounding family members or caregivers of that loved one. Wish number four um, gets more into the guidance that you would want to give to, uh, not just to your healthcare providers, but also to your family caregivers about uh, what they can do to keep you comfortable and what you, how you would want to be treated. It includes a bullet point that says, I want to have people with me when possible. And sometimes you know, people will write in the margins the list of people who they want with them. Sometimes there's list B of people who they don't want there. Uh, those are important things. They might seem small, but they're important. There's also an option for things like, uh, I want to have music play. And you can write the names of, uh, or the types of music that you'd like to have played. I remember one woman was filling this out and she said, no harps, I don't want any harps. I don't want it to sound, you know, sound like um, I have harps around me. I have no idea why, <laughs> right? But that for her, that was important. So any, any instrument but harps. Uh, I've seen other instances where people will write in a margin. Uh, one of the options is I want to have my hand, either in my hand held or massaged or I'd like to have my, if my hands are dry, I'd like them to be kept moist, you know, with lotion or to have a hand massage. And some people will say, well, yes, massage my hands, but don't touch my feet. My, te my feet are ticklish. Again, small little things, but they mean the world when a family is caring for someone. I remember one woman noted uh, in the margin that she loved lavender lotion. So the family who was caring for her, I think they went out and found every bit of lavender, anything that they could find. Lavender lotion, she had lavender in a vase next to her. It was really beautiful. And these are the things, thinking back to how we began this discussion about the idea that one of the things that I think we all want to do is to really care well for each other and to love each other well. I think for most of us, when it comes to caregiving, to, to caring for somebody who we love when they're sick, we want to do everything right, but we're just not sure what right is. And that's where Five Wishes comes in. It answers that question of what right is. And right might be about life support treatment decisions, or it might be about the scent of the lotion that's used. And you know, I remember even with my own personal experience with my grandparents, one of the things that I always remember doing when I was a teenager and, and visiting my grandmother in the hospital is that every time I'd walk in the room, if her legs, if her feet were all wrapped up tight in a blanket and a sheet, I would untuck her toes and let her toes stick out at the end of the blanket. And the reason was that uh, my grandmother would always, I remember my grandmother always talking about 
how she had hot feet. Her feet were always hot. And she never wanted to have big, thick socks on. She never wanted to be all tucked in. And nurses and caregivers were doing what they thought was right by wrapping her up in a little cocoon or her feet nice and tight. But that wasn't what she wanted. And I remember as a, 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 a teenage grandson thinking, man, I wish I could do so much more for my grandmother. I wish I could make everything right for her and take away all the things that she doesn't want to have. And I couldn't make everything right. It was imperfect. But I could untuck her toes. And, uh, and I, I remember knowing that that meant a lot to her. So it meant a lot to me. And part of Five Wishes, <clears throat> then it's not just so much about helping you to make right decisions, but it's helping you really to know, to really know the person who you're caring for and what's important to them and to be able to act on that. And lastly, wish five gets even more really into matters of the heart and soul. My wish for what I want my family to know. It lets you express love, forgiveness in a simple way. Uh, if it's important to you that your family members make peace with each other, if there are disagreements or divisions, there's a place for that. If there's anything that you see here in, in wish five that doesn't resonate with you, that doesn't sound like what you want to say, then you can cross it out. If there are important things that you want to say that aren't here, then you can use either the blank lines on that page or you can attach more pages to it. You're welcome to do that to any part of Five Wishes, to write additional information or instructions or attach pages to your Five Wishes. There are also a, a few prompts in Five Wishes, in, in Wish Five specifically, where you can give instruction to your family on what you would want to happen after you've died regarding your memorial service, if you'd like one, if you'd prefer to be buried or cremated, and if somebody knows your, your wishes for what you would like to have done after you've died. Also, what you want your healthcare providers to know about what matters most to you. There's a space for you to fill in uh, that information as well. So again, like all sections of Five Wishes, the idea here is that it's digging into the heart of what matters most to you so that you can pass that information on to the people who are likely to be around you if you're very sick. And also so that you can ask the people who you might be a caregiver for what's important to them so that you don't have to guess. As you work to the end of Five Wishes, uh, you're just about done you do want to make sure that you sign it in the presence of two witnesses. You know, as you're signing five wishes, wait until you're in the presence of two witnesses. It could be a neighbor. It could be a friend. There are a list of people there on that signature page that can't be your witness. Like it can't be your family member or healthcare provider or a few other types of individuals. So read those instructions carefully and follow the instructions to make sure that you're meeting all of the legal requirements. Then, and at any time, once you start filling out your five wishes, we encourage you to activate your five wishes. So go to that website that's printed on the back cover of Five Wishes, and it's on the screen here. It's fivewishes.org, five spelled out, fivewishes.org slash activate. And there you can enter your contact information so that we can keep you up to date with any changes, whether it's changes in your state law regarding advanced directives, anything else that you need to know and pass along some helpful tips on the next steps, what to do after, you complete, uh, after you've completed your five wishes. So be sure to do that. Go to fivewishes.org slash activate and make sure that we can contact you with important updates. And then take your five wishes and talk about it with your family. Anybody who you might expect would be involved in your care, might come visit you in the hospital, might be involved in decisions that have to be made for you, talk about it with them. And I would say, think about what part of Five Wishes you feel most comfortable with and start with that. You, you don't have to start with wish one. You can start with wishes three, four, and five, and then work back to the front or whatever way you feel most comfortable. You're driving this conversation. So start in a place that's comfortable for you. And, um, and tell stories. You know, if they're most oftentimes 
there are experiences that we've had in seeing somebody who we love or even hearing stories of, uh, of experiences that have either gone very well or very badly. Both are important to be able to talk about. If there was an experience in your life, maybe with your own parents or with your Aunt Sue or whoever it might be, and you think, yeah, that how how our family came together and cared for her and her experience, it was, that's what I want. Well, describe that in great detail. And if it's the opposite, and that can be hard to talk about, but it's important to pass along of, of experiences that you want to avoid, that's helpful also to be able to pass along to them. And lastly, uh, in addition to your local hospice and palliative care provider, who you can go to with questions on filling out five wishes and, uh, and definitely questions about how to get the best care possible and the appropriate care for you and your loved ones. You can also contact us at Five Wishes if you have any questions. We have a few different resources available to help uh, guide your conversation with your family, conversation guide for individuals and families. Uh, there's a DVD if you'd like to use that with your family or any other group that you're a part of. I mentioned that we have Five Wishes in many different languages. Some of them are listed on the screen here. And, uh, and I just really encourage you after participating in this virtual event today to think about actually completing your five wishes, but don't stop there. And don't stop at just communicating your own wishes to the people who you love. But think about who in your circle, your close friends, your family, your neighbors, the people at your church or your place of worship or your workplace or anybody who you're connected to and consider bringing this benefit, the benefit, the gift of peace of mind that Five Wishes brings, consider bringing that to them as a gift. You can start by saying, you know, I, I heard about Five Wishes and I used it and it was helpful to me and my family and so I'd like to provide it to you. And if you have any questions about how to do that, uh, whether it's a group of 10 people or 1,000 or 10,000, uh, we're, we're happy to talk with you about how to do that. And, uh, and we're especially grateful for, uh, for all of our partner organizations all across the country who really have done the, uh, the, the incredible work of putting Five Wishes into the hands of people who can use it, especially those who are involved in hospice and palliative care, and, uh, and especially grateful to those who arranged this virtual presentation today. Uh, so thank you, and remember that we are here to be helpful in any way that we can be. Thank you.